Thanks for tuning in to No Wine in No Time. I'm your host Dave and today we're concentrating on one single varietal, a grape the French call Mourvedre. Now the reason why I say the French call Mourvedre, if we just skip into Spain a little bit, that particular grape is called Monastrel. If we head to the New World, we see that same grape called Mataro. So I wanted to put that in perspective. Morvedra is also Monastrel or Mataro. Now this particular grape is native to either the Iberian Peninsula in Spain or the southern part of France. No one really knows because it's equally distributed throughout those areas. But one thing that we know for sure is that this particular grape is a very small-globed, thick-skinned, very tannic grape that produces a full-bodied wine. Now, I say that this particular grape is cultivated close to the Mediterranean, and that's because it has a very unique uh, desire or want at a vineyard land. It is said that Morvedra wants to have its face in the sun and its feet in the water. Kind of like the rest of us when we go to the beach. We want our face in the sun and their feet in the water. So this is a grape that excels in areas that are very hot, very dry, but have wonderful aqueduct type systems down below the water. So coastal Mediterranean in France is certainly an area that is perfect for that. Now one of the areas that Morvedra uh, controlled almost half of the plantings was an area called Rhone. Now we think of Rhone, we always think Morvedra being a blending grape. But if we go back before Phylloxera decimated the vineyards in southern France, remember Phylloxera was that little louse that ate the roots of grapevines and actually killed a lot of the rootstock and grapevines in France, Italy, Spain, Portugal in the late 1800s. Before Phylloxera hit, half of the vines planted in Rhone were more Vedra. So that's interesting. As they stage the comeback, more Vedra is a little bit more difficult to cultivate. So because of that, they chose to plant more Syrah and Grenache in that area. So what was once 50% in Rhone now has dropped to 3% of all plantings in Rhone. So we shift a little bit more into Languedoc and Provence when we want to focus on Morvedra heavy wines. So Provence is the area that I want to concentrate on because Bandol, Provence, really has the world's highest or best expression of a Morvedra based wine. In this particular area, Provence and Bandol specifically is ideal because Bondol is actually naturally shaped like a semi-hemispheric amphitheater. And the way that it's situated to the ocean is that the vineyards face south. So that particular vine gets the full sunlight it needs, but it has its feet solidly in the water. And in this particular area, we have pebbly limestone and a little bit of sandy marl, which Morvedra loves. In Bondol, 50% minimum has to be Morvedra in that, in that particular wine. But this is interesting because rarely do we see a maximum level. And in this particular area, it can be a maximum of 95%. So it can never be 100% Morvedra, but somewhere between 50 and 95%. Now they're going to further put some restrictions on these wines to raise the level of quality. And in France, an AOC, Appellation, Bandol, Contrôlé wine has to be de-stemmed prior to crushing. So think about that. We're talking about a very small globe, thick skinned grape. So we're going to pick that at the peak of its ripeness. Now we have to take all of the individual grape berries off of their stems before we can crush them. Why do you think we would do that? Because Morvedra itself imparts a lot of tannins to the wine, and guess what else imparts tannins? Actual stems. 
So by removing the stems, we raise the quality of the wine by keeping the tannin level in check. So it's really quite fascinating why this is the world's highest quality Morvedra, and that's why I wanted to explain a little bit more about it. One final thing on a Bondul AOC is that post-fermentation, this wine must spend a minimum of 18 months in oak. So let's kind of summarize that. Between 50 and 95% Morvedra, so we have a lower level and an upper level, must be de-stem, and then it must spend 18 months in oak. That's a lot of restrictions on a wine to ensure a specific delivery and a consistent level of quality. So what I picked for you today is a 2011 Hecton Bonnier uh, Bondol Rouge. And this particular wine, the first thing that we're going to notice is it's very dark in its color. It gets a lot of phenolic compounds from the grape skins and Morvedra is certainly very very well colored and very well structured. If we swirl to liberate some of the aromas, the first thing that leaps out of the glass is the oak. Now remember this wine spent 18 months in oak. The one thing that's not mandated by French wine laws is whether that's new oak or whether that's used oak. My guess by smelling this wine is it's probably a combination of both. So we not only get the oaky flavors, but behind that we get a little bit of plum and a little bit of uh, kind of a peppery spice behind that. So let's go ahead and give it a taste and see what it delivers across the palate. Wow. Across the palate we see Hecton Bagnier's uh, Bondel Rouge as being quite a powerhouse. It enters the mouth with beautiful uh, dark black cherry and a little bit of black raspberry flavor. So it, it kind of hits the front of the palate in a little bit of sweetness. Mid palate, we feel that lift from acidity, and on the back side, it's nothing but leather, tobacco, and tannins. So this is a very, very structured wine, and one that would love to have fatty, protein rich foods. So when you think about the next time going out and buying a ribeye steak or a prime rib and grilling it, something like a bandoule rouge would be absolutely perfectly paired with that. When we introduce protein and tannins, they bond with, I'm sorry, protein and fats, they bond with tannins and actually pull that out a little bit and allow more of the fruitiness to present itself. So a very, very serious wine, and one that at a 2011 vintage is really just a baby. But it gives me great pleasure to consume it today, but other bottles in my collection will age for years to come. So I'm going to enjoy a little bit more of Hecton Bagnier's creation, and I ask that you come back next time, because soon you'll know wine in no time. Mm -hmm.